You are going to fall so deeply in love this Valentine's Day. No matter what your relationship status is, I have a challenge for you. We are going on three blind dates with Valentine's Day books. They're romantic, they're cute. I took your suggestions and I'm going to be reading some of your favorite romance books of all time. I cannot believe it's almost Valentine's Day. In honor of it, of course, we have to do a blind date. I have each of them numbered one, two, and three. Two's definitely smudged. So this time I actually want to do like the generator. Hey Siri. Hey Siri. Hey Siri. Pick a random number one through three. The answer is one. <laughs> this is number one, so please be good. You guys, this book on my TikTok, I have gotten a few people that have been like, The Love Hypothesis is one of my favorite books. I know people love this one, so I am so excited to read it. It's been so hard holding out because I've been waiting for this video, but I am so excited. I'm gonna read you guys the back just in case you're not familiar with the story. In a fake relationship between scientists meet the irresistible force of attraction, it throws one woman's carefully calculated theories on love into chaos. As a third year PhD candidate, Olive Smith doesn't believe in lasting romantic relationships, but her best friend does. And that's what got her into this situation. Convincing, wait, I think her name's Anne, but it's spelled a-N-H. I'm gonna say Anne. Convincing Anne that Olive is dating and well on her way to a happily ever after was always going to take more than hand wavy Jedi mind tricks. Scientists require proof. So like any self-respecting biologist, Olive panics and kisses the first man she sees. Oh girl. That man is none other than Adam Carlson, a young hotshot professor and well-known which is why Olive is positively floored when Stanford's reigning lab tyrant agrees to keep her charade a secret and be her fake boyfriend. And when a big science conference goes haywire, putting Olive's career on the Bunsen burner. That's great. And I'm surprised at her again with his unyielding support and even more unyielding six pack abs. That escalated kind of quickly. Suddenly their little experiment feels dangerously close to combustion. All of these little puns. And Olive discovers that the only thing more complicated than a hypothesis on love is putting her own heart under the microscope. This sounds so cute and like the perfect Valentine's Day book. So I am starting on this ASAP right now. Do you guys read the prologue? I do like, I'd say 90% of the time. Actually, Allie Hazelwood, this is the first book I've ever read from her. Definition, hypothesis. And it has the definition in there. That is so cute. Okay, I have some thoughts. I am only 54 pages in, so not far at all. Right now, I've been introduced to Olive and Dr. Carlson, aka Adam. And I will say this is much more fast paced than I thought, but it's also not. I did not realize that this fake dating situation was going to happen so quickly. I thought this was going to be like a slow burn, but no, they like immediately have started this fake dating situation. And now I feel like it's kind of this like slow burn. I'm still really liking it. It's really cute so far. I've also started to make Pinterest boards on Pinterest that kind of have themes with the books that I'm reading. If you guys are like me, I love to go to Pinterest and like figure out the aesthetic of the book that I'm reading and kind of just like the vibes, the fan art, and I created one for the love hypothesis. So if you need a good Pinterest board that's gonna get you hyped up for this book, I'll link the board down below. Misha is trying to fight for my attention right now. So I am going to read and I will catch up with you guys after. What's the light inside your mind, my My heart when I tell you my heart was beating so fast 
because I just had a feeling that someone, I don't know why I thought Anne was gonna find out while Olive and Malcolm were at Starbucks. I thought Anne was standing behind her for some reason. <laughs> All I can say is, wow, I am so disappointed <laughs> in all of right now. Why wasn't she just honest? <laughs> Why do these characters never tell the truth until they're like in trouble or there's a fight or something? <sighs> okay, I'm disappointed in Olive because now he thinks something that's just not true. Okay, but I'm thinking something is super sketch with this Tom dude. I don't think Olive should go to Harvard for a year. This guy seems really sketchy and like he has some weird ulterior motives. So I don't trust him, but maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but that's my theory right now. Okay, I'm going to continue reading. I am on page 188 and I'm hoping that we can make it a good ways. I've been reading all day, so yeah. I'm loving this book. I totally get the hype, I'm loving it. I just finished The Love Hypothesis. Okay, I'm gonna give you my thoughts, my opinions. Okay, so pretty much recap. Olive Smith is like kind of like she went on a couple dates with this one guy named Jeremy and then her best friend Anne and Jeremy they like kind of hit things off anyway Olive gave Jeremy and her best friend her blessing to like date but her best friend was just being a great best friend and was worried and just didn't like feel right about it. So she wanted to make sure that Olive was truly moved on from this guy, Jeremy. The whole reason Olive got into this mess of this big dating situation, she saw Adam, who was Dr. Carlson. He is a professor that is infamous at Stanford. And she basically just gives him a kiss because he's the first guy that she sees as she's walking down the hallway and her best friend, Anne, is walking down the hallway too so she had to like really sell it especially because she told Anne that she was on a date she was actually at the lab so she had to make it look real so she kisses Adam and this is how this fake dating situation starts I would say this is almost like a five star romance read for me this was so good there was not one point while I was reading this where I felt like there was some kind of slump or like it was slow. This was a constant, just like cute little rush of emotions. You're wondering the whole time, you're like, oh my gosh, like what is he thinking? What is she thinking? I got a little bit frustrated with her a couple of times, but this was so cute. I love her friends. I love his friend. I just, I loved the story so much and I love how he is kind of the antagonist in this story but he has such a great like he's just really misunderstood the end had my heart it was just in my throat my heart was in my throat because when you find out what he's been thinking this whole time chapter 22 this chapter just <laughs> shook me to my core it made me want to cry because of how cute this was and how he just spills the beans. He spills the beans and I did not think that we were gonna get this from him. So I loved this book so much. It was so cute, fast paced. It was very fast paced. I was so shocked. It kept my attention the whole time. And I guess this is like a Star Wars fan fiction. Like that's how it started. The only thing you guys know, I was like getting ready for bed, had my audiobook on, and then it got to a spicy scene, which I was not expecting. I was not expecting spice in this book. Felt a little bit blindsided. Um, so that was uncomfy because you guys know I just usually skip the, the spice and uh, that was a little bit awkward for me, having to go pause my audiobook because I wasn't expecting that. I would give The Love Hypothesis right now, honestly, I think I would give it like a five star. I started with such a great book 
and now I have to read the others. Hopefully, I mean, I don't want to move on. Like, this was so good. Okay, we have our other two. So let's go ahead and ask Siri which one we should pick. Can you pick a random number two through three? It's two. Okay, so that worked. The answer is two. Okay. I'm gonna show you guys first, although I think I know what it is. Okay. You deserve each other! I thought this would be such a funny romance read. I'm sad, I'm not ready to move on from the love hypothesis. Like, that was so good. And now I kind of have this bar that's set, and I need these guys to step up. I need them to be good reads, so. Okay, I'm gonna read to the back. When your nemesis also happens to be your fiance, happily ever after becomes a lot more complicated in this wickedly funny lovers to enemies to lovers <laughs> romantic comedy debut. Naomi Westfield has the perfect fiance. Nicholas Rose holds doors open for her, remembers her restaurant orders, and comes from the kind of upstanding society family any bride would love to be a part of. They never fight. They're preparing for their lavish wedding that's three months away and she is miserably and utterly sick of him. Naomi wants out, but there's a catch. Whoever ends the engagement will have to foot the non-refundable wedding bill. When Naomi discovers that Nicholas too has been feigning contentment, the two of them go head to head in a battle of pranks, sabotage, and all out emotional warfare. With the countdown looming to the wedding that may or may not come to pass, Naomi finds her resolve slipping. Because now that they have nothing to lose, they're finally being themselves and having fun with the last person they expected, each other. I am excited to read this one. Um, I am just like so curious how this is going to go. So, shall we get started? You always have me on. share them with you guys. I disliked the main character so much, probably for like 80% of the book. Even at the end, like I wasn't too fond of her. She still was kind of frustrating me. So pretty much this premise is that there's this couple, they're engaged, and they are planning a wedding together. Except not really because her mother, and her soon-to-be mother-in-law is just micromanaging everything, making all of the decisions, and is just so rude to her soon to be daughter-in-law, but also she expects so much from her son, and it's just like, it's just a mess. So there's just a minute that the main character, Naomi, has kind of bottled up, and she gets a little bit petty, which I understand because the mother-in-law reminds me of Emily from Gilmore G Girls so much. I totally understand her frustrations with that. That makes sense. But just the pettiness of it all, oh my gosh, like, there, she was so selfish for most of the book that it was just so frustrating. And like, her character arc was great because at the end, it's, you know, enemies to lovers. Wait, what is it? Lovers to enemies to lovers. So, you know, we have this like beautiful arc, but I probably wouldn't go around recommending this book to everyone. It wasn't like my favorite book ever, but it was a cute romantic comedy. There were some parts that were super cheesy, um, and it wasn't the cute cheesy like the love hypothesis. I did feel like she was just belittling him at times too. Of course it went both ways and he tantalized her too, but it was like kind of annoying because even now, although things 
ended happily, I still am like, I don't know if you guys should be together. Like, this is so toxic. I don't know, that's just my opinion. I just felt like he was really trying and she just had so much animosity that it was like trying to get through to a brick wall. I would say overall it was okay. I mean, I got through the whole book, um, but I would probably rate it um, maybe like two and a half. For comedy, I didn't really laugh. I was actually more frustrated. Maybe that's a little too harsh, but it's not that I hated it. I just, I wouldn't read it again and I wouldn't really recommend it to people. Okay, no need to get cereal for this one. <sighs> Our final romance book for Valentine's Day. not know what this is about uh because i have no idea what it's about so after living through a dumpster fire of a valentine's day emily hornby wait hornby sorry emily hornby escapes to her grandmother's house for some much needed girl talk and companionship there emily passes out on the couch but when she wakes up she's back home in her own bed that's not the only shocker though somehow it's valentine's day again and the next day another disaster v-day it seems that Emily is stuck in some sort of time loop nightmare that she can't wake up from as she rewatches her boyfriend Josh cheat on her day after day. In addition to Josh's recurring infidelity, Emily can't get away from the enigmatic Nick whom she keeps running into, sometimes literally in unfortunate ways. How many days can one girl spend passively watching her life go up in flames? And when something good starts to come out of these terrible days, what happens when the universe stops stalling out do-overs? Okay, I went to go take a little break. I went to my favorite coffee shop and got a rosemary oat milk latte. Rosemary is my new obsession. It is so good. So I got a latte and I am about to start reading. I am so excited. I am only on page seven and I'm already liking it. controversial so buckle up for this one so I liked the do-over but yesterday I was reflecting on where I was at I was like halfway through with the book yesterday and I was just thinking what I would rate it halfway through and I gave it four stars and I was curious to see when I got to like once I finished the book if my review would go up which I was expecting that it would and I will say I loved the writing style. It like kind of changed a little bit at the end. I feel like it picked up more and it just reminded me of a movie. We were cutting scenes so often and I really liked that towards the end of the book. I feel like this is a hard trope to write about in general because it's the Groundhog Day trope, but I don't know. I just feel like I was getting a little bit bored with the repetition of her day. Although I will say the author 
she did switch it up so you weren't just constantly rereading the same thing that was happening over and over again and i would say i would still give it four stars overall because the ending was super cute very sappy of course it was kind of refreshing because this is a clean book so that was awesome reading this it was very refreshing i feel like the main character emily she was very likable so it was very easy to read especially from her point of view so different from you deserve each other i felt like after reading that book i was struggling because of how toxic the main character is um in my opinion so it was really nice reading from emily's point of view and same with the love interest nick i felt like it was just a cute young love romance and i think the author did such a great job writing this high school romance i thought it was very like age appropriate and it was really cute so I was a little bit let down because I didn't see the hype like everyone was talking about. So I would give it four stars. It was still a good book and I would still recommend it to people. That's my thoughts on the do-over. That is it for my blind date with three Valentine's Day books. It just got me in the Valentine's Day spirit. I would say the do-over is definitely the most valentine's day themed book that i read because you are repeating valentine's day so it's very fitting for the holiday but my favorite was the love hypothesis this book exceeded all expectations it was so good i can't believe i got a five star read out of this i am like so shocked i didn't really think that i would if you guys have any valentine's day recommendations drop them down below i'm going to be doing a reading vlog of like two other romance books coming up and one of them is love in other words which i'm so excited to read i've heard nothing but great things about it so that's getting a whole vlog dedicated just to that book because i feel like it deserves it from all that i've heard all right i'll see you guys with my next book video